Hello, welcome back. The title here is called Dependent and Independent Variables and also Introduction to Functions. Here, this is part one. I know it sounds like it's a complicated sounding title, but I promise you, and I really do mean it, that this is a very simple stuff. We're going to learn it together in a way that's understandable by anyone. <clears throat> Usually, students don't study this stuff until a little later uh, when we start talking about functions in higher math. We're going to conquer it here because it really is just so easy to understand the way we're going to talk about it. So here we have to talk about a dependent and an independent variable. We're going to read a little word problem, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the variables or the, or the things that the problem is really involving, the dependent and the independent variable. So let's read it. It says Betsy is given $2 for each chore she completes. How much will she earn in all? Write down an equation uh, and use the table to calculate uh, or write down the equation for this problem using two variables, one dependent and one independent variable. Use it to complete the table. All right, so what table are we talking about? I'm talking about this table. All right, this problem involves number of chores and dollars earned. Of, co of course, you know that if you do more chores, then you earn more money. And it says right here that she's given $2 for every chore she completes. So if she does one chore, she gets $2. If she get, does two chores, then you might guess she would double and she would get $4 and so on. So this table is really just summarizing what you already know. If you know how much she is getting for every chore and you're told how many chores that she does, then we can calculate the amount of money earned. So that's just simpler math, right? That's just a table. But when we get into higher math like this, we have to write it, kind of formalize it a little bit more. We have this thing called a dependent and an independent variable. It sounds hard. Let's talk about it and make it very simple. First, let's talk about what this problem is saying. If we wanted to write an equation to calculate the money that she was going to make, let's let the variable D be the number of dollars she earns, right? So how would you calculate the number of dollars? It says right here she gets $2 for every chore she completes. So really the amount of money she makes depends on how much work she does. So if we let the, num the letter C represent the number of chores she does, and if we know that she gets $2 for every chore, then two times the number of chores that she does should be the number of dollars that she earns. It's really important that you understand what this equation means. This means that the number of dollars that she earns is equal to two times the number of chores, right? Why do we know it's two times? Because for every chore she does, she gets $2. So we have to multiply by two so that we can calculate the amount of dollars she's going to, uh, to earn. Now, here's where we have a little bit of fun here. And this is where I start to get excited because I start, I get to teach you something that you really don't learn until later in math and it's incredibly easy to understand. So this relationship, D is the number of dollars, is one of the variables, and C, the number of chores that she does, is another variable. You can think of this equation as what we call in higher math, we call it a function. A function is a fancy word, but really what it means is just a mathematical like machine that calculates something, a calculator, really. A function is like a box, and inside the box is like a bunch of calculational things, and out the other end of the box comes a calculation. So if this box here is gonna calculate something, what do we feed into the box? Well, we look at our equation. We tell it how many chores we've done, then we multiply by two, and then the calculation result is the number of dollars that we earn. Right? So what goes into the box? It's C, the number of chores, right? And what goes on the outside of the box? Like what's the output of the calculation? It's how many dollars I earned. So what happens is this equation thing is called a function and it's sort of like a box that does a calculation. Inside the box is like a bunch of little hamsters or, or a computer or something and it's doing a calculation. And every time you tell it how many chores come in, then it tells you how many dollars come out. What is inside this box? It is the equation that we just wrote down. The inside this box is telling us that the number D that's going to come out is equal to 2 times C. So if I put one chore into the box, then it'll be 2 times 1 and $2 will come out. If I put two chores into the box, a different amount of dollars is going to come out. If I put five chores into the box, 2 times 5, $10 comes out. So now we have to talk about filling out this table and we also have to talk about the dependent and the independent variables, right? So first, let's do the calculations for the table. We know that we have a table with two chores, five chores, and seven chores, and what we want to do is we want to fill this table out. So let's calculate it 
when uh, uh, the chores is equal to two, when we have two chores, right? So two chores, right? What does that mean? That means that the dollars is gonna be two times two. D is equal to four dollars. So when two chores go into the box, then two times two is four and four dollars come out. So over here, when we did two chores, we now know that the output of this calculation or equation or function or whatever you wanna call it is four dollars. Now what happens when we stick five chores in here? Right, what's gonna happen? Then the dollars that are gonna come out is gonna be, what is the function doing? It's two times the number of chores, two times five. So D is equal to $10. Right? So when two chores goes in, $10 comes out. So, I'm sorry, five chores goes in, $10 come out. And then finally, the other table is when, or part of the table is when seven chores go in. Right? So then D is going to be two times the number of chores, two times seven. So then D is $14. Right? That's what that means. So $14. So you can see what's going on here is that I know how many chores I'm doing, right? And I'm calculating the dollars I'm getting. And all I'm doing is I'm taking this number and multiplying by two to get four. I'm taking this number and multiplying by two to get 10. I'm taking this number and multiplying by two to get 14. This function is what is doing that. The chores, number of chores go in and the dollars come out. It's just a calculation. So if you ever see somebody say, hey, this function in math is doing something, in your mind just think, oh, it's just a calculation. Numbers go in, numbers go out, that's it. it. That literally is it. Now, when we get to higher math, the functions that you will see inside that box can get more complex. But the idea is the most important thing, and the idea is simple. Numbers go in, calculate, numbers go out. That's really it, that is what a function is. That is what this equation is. Function and equation in this case are basically the same thing. Now, if I had to ask you, Take a look at our equation. The dollars is equal to two times the number of chores. It looks like the number of dollars is dependent on how many chores I do. If I do two chores, I make a certain amount of money. If I change the number of chores to six chores, I do a different amount of money. If I do seven chores, I do yet a different amount of money. So it looks like the number of dollars is dependent on whatever I feed into the function. The, num the, the numbers coming out on the right-hand side, the dollars, is dependent on what I put in. So this is called the dependent variable. Dependent variable. Because it depends on whatever you put into the function. And this one's called the independent. I'll put VAR for variable. So what you have is a dependent variable and an independent variable, and to figure out which is which, all you have to do is figure out what are you feeding into the function. Whatever you are feeding into the function is called the independent variable. That is what you're free to change, how many chores I do, but the dependent variable, based on the calculation, is dependent on what I'm feeding into the calculation. So the independent variable here is the number of chores, and we labeled that C in our problem. And the dependent variable was the number of dollars, and we labeled that the number D in our problem. So the first problem is now complete. The following problems will go much, much faster, but let's just talk through it one more time since it's a lot of information and make sure you understand. We said that Betsy is given $2 for every chore she completes. So we write an equation. We say the number of dollars is equal to two, because $2 for every chore, times the number of chores she does. In words, this is what it looks like. We said that we can represent this calculation as a box, which we call a function. We feed in the number of chores like a little, we just throw it into a box and there's a, a bunch of gerbils doing calculations in here or computer or mice or something and they're doing some calculation and the output of it is the number of dollars. And the calculation happening is we just take the numbers that are coming in, we multiply by two and we spit them out and we call it D. Because the number of dollars is dependent on what we feed in, we call it the dependent variable. And because of the number of, that, of chores that we put in, we're free to choose that ourselves. How many chores do I want to do? I'll, I'll decide. That's the independent variable. So the number of chores was the independent variable, which was C in our case. And the number of dollars was the dependent uh, 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 variable here called D. So for every independent variable we have, we just multiply by two to get the dependent variable. Independent variable goes in, dependent variable comes out. 
independent variable goes in, dependent variable comes out. That was a lot of talking. <laughs> and it's just going to be that way. But the next problem will be much faster. Let's take a look. It says Raven completed an extra credit assignment. So whoever, whatever score she makes on her next math test will be increased by five points. What could her total score be? Write down an equation for the problem using an independent and a dependent variable, and then use it to complete the table. So basically, we need to write an equation for the situation. And the situation is telling us that she completed an extra credit assignment. Whatever score she makes will be increased by five points. Right? So we can call, you know, uh, we can call uh, the variables whatever we want, you know. We can say her total score, t, right, will be whatever her kind of base score is that she gets, and we'll increase it by five points. So this is her base score on the test, and then her extra credit adds five points to it for her total score, which we'll call t, right? Now, if we want to draw a picture, what is happening basically here is we're going to feed in numbers and we're going to get out numbers. What's going to happen? We're feeding in her base score, S. This is our base score on the test. And then what's happening in here is that T is S plus 5. We're taking S and we're adding 5 to it, and then the, the total scores, T, are coming out the other side. So if I put you know, a, a test score of 80 in, then 85 comes out. If I put 95 in, then plus 5, 100 comes out. If I put in 70 in here, plus 5, 75 comes out. This box is just telling you what is happening here. The function is just taking the input, adding 5 to it, and then calling it another variable on the output. So the dependent variable, the dependent variable is t in this case. It's the total score. It depends on what input values we put in. It depends on what we make on our base test. And so our base test score is the independent variable s, right? So whatever numbers you're putting in, that's, de that's independent. And whatever numbers are coming out, that's called dependent. So now let's put a test score of 78 in. If we put a test score of 78 in, then we'll just add 5 to it. And what will we get? We will say that t is 78 plus 5 is 83. 83. So when input of 78 goes in and output of 83 goes out. Let's take the next case. What if I have 80, a score of 89 that comes in? The function here, or the equation, is just going to add 5 to it. Input and output, right? And then the output, in that case, will be 89 plus 5, which would be 94. So 94 will be the output right here. Input, output, input, output. And then finally, if we have an input score of 94, and then we add 5 to it, then uh, we get a 99. 99 comes out. Right, for every one of these guys, we have an input and we have an output. The input is called the independent variable. You can think of input independent. That kind of goes together. Input independent. That's easy to remember. The output is what is dependent on the input, so it's the dependent variable. So dependent is on the output, independent is on the input. All right, let's take a look at our last problem for this lesson. And here it is. It says, Helen makes her children split the tickets. They win at the arcade evenly before they can claim any prizes. How many tickets could each child have? Write down an equation with an independent and a dependent variable and use it to solve the problem. So we have a situation we're going to the arcade. We have three kids and they get some tickets. The tickets are going to be called T. And it says that we're going to take those tickets and split them evenly among three children. So we're going to take and divide by three, right? And what we're calling that is how many tickets does each child have? It says Helen makes her child, three children split the tickets. How many tickets could each child have? We're going to call that, uh, we're going to call that uh, child, C for child, right? So basically each child is going to have an amount of tickets that will be equal to however many tickets they all earn during the day, and we're going to divide by three. That's going to be how many tickets each kid has. So in terms of a picture, you know, you have an input and you have an output like this, right? On the input, how many tickets did you guys earn all together at the arcade? That goes in. And then the number of tickets each child has comes out. And what we figure out is that the C, the number of tickets each child has, 
is going to be equal to t divided by 3. All you do is you take the t, the number of tickets coming in, divide by 3, and then that's going to be how many tickets each child has on the output like this. All right. What is the independent variable? Well, independent is input, right? Input is t. Independent is input. So this is the total tickets t in our case. And the dependent variable is dependent on on what you feed in. So the tickets per child in this case is called C. That's the dependent variable. Now let's figure out what happens when we earn 21 tickets at the day at the arcade. So for 21 tickets, the number of tickets each child get will be 21 divided by 3. So each child will get 21 divided by 3 is 7. So when we actually earn as a, as a team, as a family, 21 tickets, then each child gets 7 tickets. Tickets per child. That's what happens there. And then what happens when we earn 27 tickets? 27 tickets divided by 3. Then 27 divided by 3 is equal to 9. So when we earn 27 tickets as a family, each child gets 9 tickets. And then finally, when we have 36 tickets that we win, right? then each child, 36 divided by 3, will be 12. They get each get 12 tickets. So again, we have different days we go to the arcade. One day, as a family, we earn 21 tickets. On that day, each child, because we're dividing by three, will get seven. On another day, we earn this many tickets, each child will get nine. On another day, we earn the most tickets, and each child will get 12. But no matter what, these are all input values. They feed into the calculation we call a function. The calculation is just dividing by three. The output is the number of tickets per child. Input, output. I know it seems like a simple concept, but this idea of input and output and functions and calculating, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come up for the next 10 years of your education. The, the ent almost entirety of science is built on this concept. Right now, the problems are kind of simple with the calculations we're doing just multiply or divide. But when we get to higher math, the functions get more complex and they predict more important things. Later on, we'll have functions that predict uh, how fluid flows in a pipe, which is important for pumping water in the town, let's say. We have equations for predicting how the star is going to, how big a star is gonna be when it starts to die, or how an air, aircraft flies. The air flow over a wing, we have functions that predict how the aircraft air will flow over the wing, how smooth of a ride you will get. It all boils down to this concept of input and output. This is what you're learning starting that journey right here. i like you to go over all of these. Make sure you understand the concept. You have a, a, an equation, we can also call it a function. You have an input that goes into the left, calculation is done, output comes out on the right. Please hold on to that. You'd be surprised how many people don't understand that concept and it can make everything easier coming down the road. So follow me on to the very last lesson. We'll do a few more problems of this type to build your skills.